Hello everyone, Glider Man here. So today we're going to uh, start really breaking down uh, what we typed in here uh, in the last lesson where we were just creating a project. Uh, we had typed in this line that in the console, and we run it uh, just like this. Wait for it to compile. Just outputs, hello world. Just like that. So let's break down what it is, and that's what I'm kind of hoping to do with the Java series, whereas the Lego series is kind of, okay, let's get through this as fast as possible and get you doing stuff. This is going to be, okay, let's analyze what we're doing here. So uh, you're going to notice right here that the line starts off with a call to the system class right there, and you can designate, or you can see that it's uh, a class, um, because it starts with a capital S there. And when I hovered over it, uh, you can see that it was from the package, java.lang package, and it's the class system in there. Um, the java.lang package is automatically imported into the project because you can see that we don't have that class, or that package imported up here. Um, it's just by default imported. Next, we have the dot indicating that we're doing something that's inside the system class or something that's inside uh, something that it's uh, subclassed and we're referencing out and so uh, I think we can just hover right over this and you can see it is a print stream class so the system class has a print stream in it and it's in java.lang in the class system and then the variable is called out. Next we have the print line method which is felt, which is preceded by the another dot so that means in the print stream class variable that is called out there's a method called print line and the ln is designating line there. And that takes a string, which is yet another class. And so the print line means that it will take the string in, and then once it completes that, it will add a return, which you can see I have a cursor here now. So it added a return from here to here, so that we could continue doing something on the next line. If we had just made it print, just like this, um, it would not give us a new line. You can see here I'm clicking here, but the cursor is still up there. And if you had multiple of these uh, print commands in a row, they would all stack uh, right on top of each other. So let me just paste in like three of them. So despite the fact that we have three different calls, they're going to be all on the same line because we don't have the print line. So if we just change the method to print line, print line, print line, then we run it, you're going to see that they're all on a different line and that there's going to be an extra line here for whatever we do next. Um, there's another way of doing this where let's just say we deleted this middle one so that we can see the results backslash n is basically the same thing as that and backslash is kind of meaning that it's uh, doing a special command in this and then the n is designating that it's a new line so if we just run this you're going to see it gives the exact same results um, however in most cases it's much easier not to need to remember to do that and just use the print line and so let's go and break down the string. You can see we've also got the string class here, and you can see that it's an array of args. Um, that we don't really need to worry about too much, but let's just say you were running it from like the command line. You could pass in commands into uh, the program by just uh, adding, uh, let's just say we were running a Java program. We had a jar. So 
That, right off the bat, is the example of an argument where we're calling the Java runner and we're sending to it that we're running a jar and then let's just say it's test.jar like that. That would be an example of uh, commands getting passed into a program. And Java is technically a program there. So it's running the Java, we pass in the argument saying that it's a jar, and we give it the jar name. But we don't really need to worry about that too much. Um, so this is also a string, and the double quotes automatically make it a string. If they were single quotes like this, that would be a character, which you would only be able to use one. And um, just for quick reference, that's a primitive, and string um, is a class. So that would be an object. Um, so in between these double quotes, we have the text that gets displayed over here. And uh, you can do a number of things with this. You could also say, uh, hello world number, and then let's just say we wanted to have a number from the variable here, signed 9, okay? We'll just say that it's a sign 9. Um, you can do a plus sign, which will add to the string, and then we can just pass in i. So now it'll do hello world number, and then whatever we have typed into i. So if we click run on this, it says hello world number 9. So we could add another plus, and then we can add that exclamation mark that we've had with the others, and run it again. And now uh, you can see that it's kind of uh, removed and inserted the 9 into there. And then it starts to get a little bit more into the advanced strings. Um, but I just wanted to really break this down and show you guys uh, what really is happening. Um, and the console is the fake system here. If this was an actual uh, program that you were running from the command line, um, these print lines would appear in the, in the console um, on Mac. Uh, that would typically be terminal. Um, but there's a variety of others out there, like other consoles, and you can uh, see the results displayed there. So anyway, thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!